What is up, it's Vicky Hunter, and today we're gonna to look at the heart rate performance doing hardcore lifts and CrossFit with the new AmazeFit Balance 2, as well as the AmazeFit Helio Strap. These are just two sample sets as I'm doing comprehensive uh, compilation of multiple, multiple um, heart rate analysis in different workouts. And I just wanted to show you some interesting things I'm finding with very strenuous upper body type workouts. Now I have a messed up knee and as a part of the treatment for my missing cartilage because I don't have an ACL, I have started a plasma, plasma rich platelet injection, so a PRP injection. And from that, it means that I cannot put weight bearing on it for at least for the first two weeks, which is very tough. And so as a result, I've decided to really focus on upper body lifts as well as gymnastics, things like walking on my hands or headstand pushups and things like that. And we're gonna see that in these two specific workouts, plus the CrossFit workouts that I've done Tuesday and then today, the last two times have been extensive upper body, like high volume uh, work that is all wrist based. And so we're gonna see how the balance to heart rate accuracy compares to a chest strap as well as the helio strap heart rate accuracy compares to a chest strap because I'm finding it actually pretty interesting. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at the sensors themselves compared to their expensive counterparts, just to sort of see, just to sort of like an FYI, what do they look like? How are they sort of different? And then we'll go into the charts. We're just gonna look at two specific workouts that involved upper body lifting as well as CrossFit that was exclusively focused on upper body type movements. So looking at the sensors here, so on the left we have the AmazeFit Balance 2, just sort of like a, it's like a good sensor, but you have the uh, Epix Pro, which is the Elevate 5.0 sensor on the right. And if I was gonna sort of compare these out of the gate, I would say the Epix Pro looks like more fancy, more formidable, and the Balance 2 looks fine too. It just looks, you know, maybe not as fancy, not as formidable. And then if we go to the Helio strap versus the Whoop band, um, just as an FYI, this Helio strap, the strap, like the literal strap, I don't love. Uh, it definitely is not, I mean, I, you know, it, it pops off because this is not solid Velcro. So you'd want to get a new 22 millimeter quick release Velcro band to make it more functional because it's just not as functional. It's just not good Velcro. Anyway, so if you're looking at the sensors themselves, you got the Whoop sensor, which is formidable. It looks very intense. Tense. It has like a good glossy look to it, very solid. And then the uh, Amazfit Helio strap, which looks fine. It just doesn't look as formidable. Doesn't look as solid as technically as advanced. So those are the two sensors. And so now we're going to look specifically at what we found with the heart rate accuracy in two specific charts. Okay. So what we're going to see in these back-to-back uh, -back heart rate comparisons is the balance two versus a chest strap. The strap versus a chest strap, both for the same workout, for the lifting components, I put it in there, and then for the, um, the hard cardi cardiovascular CrossFit components. We're gonna look at two charts for each of the devices compared to a chest strap, and then we're gonna look at another workout, each of the devices compared to a chest strap. So here's the first one. You have the uh, chest strap in blue, the balance two in purple, and you have the first dynamic lifting. I put the, the markers on there so you could see it. The bench, headstand pushups, ring rows, bar facing, uh, I'm sorry, uh, butterfly pull-ups and handstand walks. And you can see it is keeping up pretty well. I still think that's great. This is a ton of wrist flex. I feel like that's pretty impressive. Then you see the second part of the workout. You got three rounds with rest, but you have seated dumbbell snatches, which is all wrist flex and burpees and a whole high volume of burpees. So a lot of getting up and getting down across the wrist. And that is excellent. Okay. So when looking at the helio strap performance in the same type of workout, we see a similar path. Now the helio strap doesn't keep up on some, so the blue is the chest strap, doesn't keep up on some of the lifts for the bench, the first portion of lifts where there was definitive rest in between with concentrated effort. Uh, headstand pushups, ring rows, uh, butterfly pull-ups, and handstand walks. It doesn't do bad in some of those, and it um, looks like it across the middle when I was warming up with the CrossFit class, it does well. And then in the intervals, seated dumbbell snatches and burpees, it did not keep up as well. Although I still was a little bit impressed because this is on the wrist. Um, and then if you look at the latter part, just the little tail end, it still was tracking. In, in general, I would say this is not bad. This is actually pretty decent when it comes to 
accuracy on the wrist for a wrist heavy workout. Okay, so what do we see with this one? This one's the strap. So again, a little bit reverse of last time. So this is the strap. Again, with the first section, pull-ups, these are strict pull-ups, muscle cleans, ring pull-ups with feet elevated, and uh, handstand walks again. So really, I mean, this is not bad from all the stuff I've seen. We're gonna come with big correlation at the end. And then the second part of the workout was toes to bar was 100, broken up 40, 30, 20, 10, as well as rowing intervals in between each of those sets. So not as great on the first one, and it you know it kind of mirrored the, the cool down, uh, but I, I still think this is not bad for optical heart rate sensor on the wrist for very, very wrist heavy. So that is the strap. So now let's look at the balance two. So the balance two with all those pull-ups, muscle cleans, ring pull-ups, and handstand walks, really not bad. It's still following the flow. It's still kind of in the ballpark with one little blip in the, in, the, in the end. And then on the harder part of the workout, the toes to bar and the rowing, it did kind of miss on the whole first part. But again, when I stand back and I look at this relative to the devices we just looked at, it's not that different from what I've seen from very, very wrist heavy workouts with lifting and with intensity. It's better, it's better than the whoop on the strap side. And what do we see in re revisiting all of them? So this is the balance two, heavy duty lifting with intense workout on the back end. This is the strap with heavy duty lifting, all upper body, all wrist flex, handstand walks, all of that stuff, it's, it's, uh, headstand push-ups, and then heavy hand wrist flex on the back end for the cardio. And then this is the strap on, again, another very wrist flex, upper body lifting portion, as well as an intense uh, cardiovascular portion. And then this is the balance two. So I would say both of them kind of failed on the workout on the second one, but I, I feel like both of them are nailing the lifting portion within relative accuracy. We're gonna see it all in the final workouts. We're gonna see it all in the final estimates for everything, but in simple terms, I just was impressed with both of these from heavy, heavy, all upper body workouts and how they're keeping up with these discount affordable devices. I don't, that's not to say that they're go out and buy them. I have, there's a lot of things I wanna say in the final review, but I wanna share this tidbit because I thought it was impressive for some discount devices and their ability to keep up relative compared to very expensive devices and even better than one expensive device in particular. It's the Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.